I got okay. it. Hey, what's going on? We're just getting some uh, last minute things set up. We were in our bedroom where we go often. I usually go in the basement. It's a little bit less desirable, but we it's actually pretty nice out here and not too sunny. So we thought that we might be able to go outside. The lighting might be a little bit better out here. It could be a complete train wreck. Not sure. It's the first time we've done it. We are both, well, I'll speak for myself. We are kind of boomers and our my eyesight isn't so great. But between our phones and the computer, we should be able to see every question but we'll probably be uh, squinting quite a bit. So, <clears throat> my wife Jamie is here. Hi guys. This is what, the second or third? I think it's my live third. Third, third I fourth. think you're right. Maybe fourth, yeah. You've popped in yeah. on a couple. Well, pop in was one of the slang terms we did. Uh, yeah, so again, if you're, if you're new to the stream, don't forget to subscribe. I do this every day. And I will take uh, English-related questions, learning English, or American culture-related questions. But Jamie is here, so sometimes we open it up to I don't know, questions about marriage. We've been married, or together at least, for 24 years. 24 years. Almost 25. We're, the next time around, it'll be 25. Um, she's a PE teacher, so she is into health. She knows about staying active. Sometimes she gets questions about that. So, it's a Friday. I hope everybody is doing well. We'll do our best to get in. Oh, and we've also made a couple uh, videos together. One of them came out yesterday. Southern slang video. So, Jamie is from the South, Southern United States. So, also an expert in that field if you have any questions about that. Anything else you want to say nope, while I... I think that's pretty good. Happy to be here with you guys to visit and answer questions. Keep him in check. <laughs> and uh, yes. What's, what's, his, what's this guy's name? Azot. Azot. I am wearing two pairs of glasses because I have to wear readers to be able to see. And I have very sensitive eyes to the sunlight. Um, so I have to wear sunglasses to be able to be out here to do it outside. I was hoping nobody would notice that, but wow, good good call. So Azat has just proven that his eyesight is better than our eyesight. Uh, one thing that I might want to mention, uh, because the first 10 years or so that Jamie and I were together, she kept saying, my eyes are more sensitive than yours. I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Because when it's snowing, the snow is super white, very hard for Jamie to see the sun. But... I read an article, scientific article. Apparently it's true. People with blue eyes have more sensitivity to the light than people with darker eyes like myself. It's going to be very difficult for us to type. I often like to retype the question, so that might not happen today. Anything you want to say while I... No. 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 We'll just... Okay. Just a boomer wearing two pairs of glasses. All right. Uh, so Mary looks like she has a question. Oh, maybe just a statement. She was saying that she was reading. That almost looks, uh, we've got a bug that's flying around here. That's the problem with going live outside is that you might have some bugs. If you've seen that video that I uh, did a couple months ago where it felt more like spring, I was chased away by a bee. Looks like uh, Wilson... When I can't, when can I use won't? Won't. All right. So I don't know. I don't know why this is, but we often use won't instead of will not. So it's a contraction for will not. And I, it's probably something in English's past, either when the French invaded and we have a little French or a little romance language to our. Germanic language, but yeah, won't is just a substitute for will not. So I'm hoping it won't rain while we are out here on our live stream. I'm hoping it will not rain. Will not becomes won't. 
Uh, it looks like we is asking what does propaganda mean? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. And I know we is 14 and going to school in the United States and propaganda is actually a unit that I am supposed to teach in the eighth grade, which we is in. So propaganda is when the government, most likely the government, pushes out information that seems like it's going to be without an opinion, but they're actually wanting to change your behavior. For example, when most countries go to war, there are a lot of uh, things we could call propaganda in the form of maybe posters. Now it might be online ads and they might encourage you to join the military and they might show how much fun it is to be in the military or maybe they want you to buy a certain product so they'll make that product look even better. Maybe you're investing in the country while they're at war, maybe buying some bonds. So propaganda is something you have to be very careful of because there might be another reason they're giving you that. So VIP, I think his name is Rob. It, it is Rod from Brazil. Hi Rob. He wants to know, do we have any pet peeves after almost 25 years? Yeah, it's a good question, Rod. And I know Rod and his wife have been together for quite a while, much like, uh, cause he's, he's like, I think he's 41. Rod, are you 41? Uh, I don't, Jamie, do you want to go first? <laughs> I don't really have pet peeves. I mean, there's, I mean, you just get used to things that they do and you just accept it. Um, he's very clean. I'm somewhat clean. Sorry. Jeez. I, the bug doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's bothering him a lot. Um, I've, I can just get into a me messy bed and go right to sleep. He's got to have everything perfect. So if I'm almost asleep, he's like yanking the covers and waking me back up. And I think the thing about pet peeves after being together for so long is kind of like Jamie said, uh, you either get used to them or you change them for your spouse. So, man, this little bug. I guess I'll just get used to him. My pet peeve right now is that little <laughs> bug. Uh, we have black, I'll go into black flies maybe in a little bit here. Um, yeah, so after being together so long, like I, I know some pet peeves about that people have about me, some people that I work with. and. You sometimes see in my, at least they tell me about, they might have more, but um, in my room that I normally film in, there's a drum set and I have played the drums for a long time and I like playing the drums wherever I'm at. So I'm often tapping, which can be a huge pet peeve for most people. A lot of people. Yep. I think non-drummers. Aroni, how are you? He What's also has on? the same problem with his blue eyes. Ah, Yes. Yep. Aroni has very blue Aroni. eyes. Um, I don't know if I've nailed it yet. So, Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. He needs help with the words either and neither. Ooh. Mmm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. So, obviously, both of those words are going to be used when you have choices. And it may be a little bit more complicated than this, but how about... When you are using either of the two choices, let's just keep it at two. It could be more. You don't mind which one. So let's say, hey, on Friday, we could either go out to eat for some pizza or we could go out to the movies. Either. So you don't care. And maybe the person comes back, well, I'd rather do neither. So of those two choices, I don't want to do either of them. So neither is uh, a negative word. I don't want to do, I, I would rather do neither. I, uh, neither. Some people might say neither too, if they're really highbrow. But we don't say, we don't say neither here. It might be a British thing. So Nicholas, I hope that helped. It feels weird not copying the question, but since there are two of us here, I don't, I'm not going to copy the question. It would be, it would be awkward. So Sorry about that. So we just wants to um, go back to the propaganda, and he wants to know if that's a lot like the word publicize. No, no. Publicize has no connotation to it. We talked about connotation yesterday 
where a lot of times the word, if you look it up in the dictionary, it might not have that negative side to it or positive, but propaganda is definitely has a negative con connotation to it. And publicize, it could be for good or bad. Maybe you're publicizing a book that's maybe well received, people like it, or you might publicize some hate mail, which is probably probably not going to be well received. Got it. Nah. -uh. Yep. All right, nice. And uh, so yeah, publicize is very neutral, not not so much uh, negative there. And then Nicholas would like to know. Um, do you have to join the army in America? Mm, great question. And Nicholas, I have a question for you. I think you're from Chile, right? We say Chile in here. Chile. Is that how you say it? Chile? Um, no. So uh, in the United States, you don't have to join the army. I know because I've spoken with Vitaly. I'm not sure if he is in here. And some of my friends who are Finnish and Danish. At 18, you do have to join the military. For at least one year, mandatory, have to do it. In the United States right now, it's just males, just men, just boys. When they turn 18, they have to register with something called the Selective Service. So they do have to register with the military. And if our country ever got involved in a war where we needed to draft, that's what we call, or conscript, that's another fancy term you might hear where boys, it's just men right now, would be drafted. But we have not had a draft in this country while I have been alive. So that just shows you the last time we had a draft was during what we call our Vietnam War. And that was in the early 70s. <coughs> Excuse so me. Azat wants to know if guns are banned in our state um, guns are not banned in our state, but you can't have any felonies and felonies are crimes that are like robbing someone at gunpoint, um, drunk driving, um, having drugs on you. Um, so you can have guns to hunt with. If you do want to conceal carry a weapon, which means if you want to keep it in your purse or keep it concealed or hidden away from people, you do have to take a class and pass that class and also not have any felonies, um, to conceal your weapon. Yeah, and just to go on that, um, Jamie mentioned felony. So all of the things that she mentioned were really bad crimes. We also have something called misdemeanors, misdemeanors, which are not so bad, not so not yeah. so bad. They won't prevent you from having a gun, and you will find a lot of Americans, and they often make the news that are very passionate about their guns, and they do not want them taken away. I believe that, but we don't need like, I don't understand why we have not banned, um, what are the guns that shoot a lot of bullets at one time? Oh, like our, machine guns or ARs? Our PUBG viewers will know all about that. Yeah. I think they're, uh, AR, AR 47. Is yep. it? Yep. Uh, yeah. That's the gun that has a bad reputation, bad connotation when you say AR 47, I believe, because they've been used in so many of our mass shootings and Azat says that he says I see that many shooters are in the US and yes it's unfortunate we have a, a huge mental health crisis too in the United States where we don't have enough people helping people with mental crisis I mean we have a lot of students who have some mental things that they have to deal with and trauma in their family so we do have a lot of school shootings and a lot of workplace shootings um, but we haven't had a lot of school shootings since the quarantine which has been great <laughs> That is a bit of a joke, you know, we're saying like, oh, two months without a school shooting, but it takes for us to shut down our schools for that to happen. Congrats to Rob. He said he's been um, with his, married to his wife for 16 years. That's awesome. Nice job, Rod. And then when, uh, sorry, we wants to know, can you explain why a history lesson is called social studies? I can, I can. In this country... We is taking social studies right now. We have like these four core classes. And it's science, math, English, and then this thing called social studies. And within social studies, because in high school, your social studies, it will be history, but it also might be psychology, and it also might be economics. 
there are a few things that go into social studies. And when I say economics, I don't mean um, the math classes. Um, what else would be in uh, maybe speech, as in um, we call it oratory, uh, learning how to make speeches. So geography is also in social studies, studying the earth, not but not in a science way. So social studies has a lot of different components to it, a lot of different classes. It looks like Veronica from Ukraine is here. She maybe I think she's new. I haven't seen her before. Oh wow, nice, welcome. Anybody who is new, uh, if you click on that little picture of me down there, you'll subscribe. And during my state's quarantine, which is at least another, what, two, three weeks, yeah. I will be going live every day simply because we're not leaving the house much. So I have a lot of time to uh, do these online classes. Right. And Nicholas, you, you can't refuse the Army. If they select you, you have to go and join the Army. And you do have to sign up. Um, when you turn 18 men do, you don't have a choice. That's, you have to do that. Um, so we can't refuse the army. In the last time we had the draft in the early 1970s, so about 50 years ago, there were some men who were drafted and forced to go into the army. And they actually went to Canada and we called them draft dodgers or they are called draft dodgers. I was not alive. And shortly after, one of our presidents, President Carter, um, he basically allowed everybody who went to Canada, he pardoned them. We call it a pardon when you were accused of a crime and then it's taken away. It's a pardon. So, Ayub, is that how you say that? Ayub? Yeah, sure, maybe. Um, he wants to know the difference between theory, premise, and hypothesis. Hypotheses. Wow. Wow. Um, okay, so they definitely are all super related. And they basically, if I was typing, I would say they are all an educated guess. An educated guess. So these are guesses based on a lot of research. The premise, maybe not so much. But um, if you're talking about a hypothesis, what was the first one? Theory, right? Yep, theory. Uh, the first one's theory, and that is a – let me start with hypothesis. That's specific to science. So you would have a hypothesis early on in your experiment, and this is when you are thinking something might work, but you actually want to do the experiment to see if it actually works. You have a theory? It was theory the next yep, one? Yeah, theory. So theory is actually stronger than hypothesis. In fact, I think the fact I think the fact that we are all on Earth because of gravity is a theory. I think in theory, it hasn't been actually proven. So in science, there are a lot of theories that while it can't be proved 100%, it's assumed that it's true. And then premise is more like general life. These, these are some, I'm trying to like make this in simple English, but uh, a premise is just, you might have a thought. Like uh, I have a premise that uh, my husband is cheating on me. That's why I didn't, I didn't say wife, just I didn't want to accuse you of anything. But I have a premise that you stole from me. So it's just like a prediction. They're all, they're all predictions, just different degrees. Tough one. And I don't know how to say this name. All right. Oh, Dechanch. How are you? A new subscriber from uh, India. Hi. Saw him from uh, Bob the Canadian's channel. Often. Often. He wants to know what um, language other than English we would likely hear in America. And he wants to know if that would be Spanish. Oh, almost. Black flies. should talk about black flies. Um, th it's yes. I guess if you talk about the entire country... Definitely Spanish. Yeah. Definitely Spanish. But, and there is a website you can go to, and it highlights the different areas in which languages are spoken in the United States. So, for example, in our town, if you weren't hearing English, you would most likely be hearing Somali. We have mm -hmm. a lot of Somali immigrants. In this town 50 years ago, 
If you weren't hearing English, you would most likely be hearing French. So in certain parts of California, you might be hearing Chinese or Thai. So a lot of, um, well, even some Americans are native Spanish speakers, certainly in the South. Mm -hmm. So it's a good question. Um, probably not as wide as India. You know, there are a lot of different languages spoken in India, but we have a few. Yep. Thank you, Norma and Azat. They like my sunglasses. Mm. Um, I always buy cheap ones because I lose them often. And I have many pairs in the car, in the house. I have to have sunglasses wherever I go. I don't leave home without them. Hello, Gleb. Um, Sharif wants to know, um, what does tune mates mean? Is it like roommates? Tune mates. Wow. Never heard. I've never heard of that. No, it's not a term that we would use here in the United States. Tune mates. Ah, no, mm. even that spelling, if, if it was spelled, maybe I can type here. If it was spelled like T-U-N-E, that maybe they're like bandmates. They're in the same band together, but that's not a, a term I've ever heard. Mm, I haven't either. Hi, Abraham. We wants to know if you watched The Fast and the Furious. No, no, no. I've never seen The Fast and the Furious. However, last year, my son and I, I think it's a Fast and Furious spinoff. We went to see Hobbs and Shaw. Hmm. <laughs> that was actually a good movie. I like I liked Hobbs and Shaw. Um, Aroni, Aroni is talking about Uncle Sam. Yes, a very famous bit of propaganda. It's kind of stuck now. But yeah, Uncle Sam was saying that his country needs us. Speaking of the, uh, the young boys and men to war. And even in World War II, it was such a big thing. A lot of women got involved working at home here, making tanks and bullets and stuff. VIP wants to know, is Hole in the Wall and a burger joint the same thing? Oh, you used Hole in the Wall and yep. the slang. That's a good one. Uh, did you want to explain that one? I feel um, like I'm doing the talking. I don't think they would be the same thing. <clears throat> Do you know? A Hole in the Wall is like this really small restaurant that probably you only learn about from word from mouth. They don't have to do a lot of advertising or publicizing. People just tell them about how good it is. Like City Cafe, it's a really small restaurant. Um, they serve really great food. A burger joint is like McDonald's, Burger King. There could be a hole in the wall burger joint. There could be. But yeah. Um, we have Five Guys. I'm not sure if you guys have Five Guys. That's a really good burger joint. Um, in the South, we have like Rallies, Sonic. Hardee's. Um, am I missing any? Yes, there are a lot. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of burger joints in the South. So many. The South has a lot of restaurants compared to the North. Which um, is why so many people in the South right. are, are more overweight yeah. than, than us in the North, on yeah. average. Yeah. yeah, it's a good question. Hole in the wall. So, Daniel from Ukraine wants to know where I'm from. It's mm. not a secret. I am from Alabama. Um... Oh, and somebody mentioned in the video, I wish I could remember who, and they were wondering, um, when are you going to do a Northern mm. English video? And the thing is, is uh, it's mostly what I do is Northern English. I try to make it, but in the North, we just don't have anything that's really unique. I might be able to do a video of like Wicked Smack. Yeah. You know? I, might, I might be able to do a video like that. Yep. Riza. Thank you for liking my double glasses. It's necessary for today. Uh, hi, Maria. Oh, somebody wants to know where Cecilia is. Yes, I saw hi, that. William. Who's that, William? Ciao, William. So, Sergey wants to know, do people in the U.S. plant any veggies near their house? For example, tomatoes and cabbage. Yes, they do. Our neighbors actually... Um, so, when I was younger, my parents had a huge piece of land um, with my grandmother and they made just rows and rows of vegetables and it was right by our house so they could go out and farm it. Um, and a lot of people do that in the South because it has more weather that's conducive or good for planting stuff. Here in the North, um, you can only plant certain things and a lot of people don't have a big garden like how I grew up. There's like corn, 
here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, cranberries. But potatoes. Potatoes. Apples. Apples. Um, but like our neighbor across the street, you'd have to show them someday. Yeah. They make these uh, planter boxes or uh, vegetable boxes. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. And you put dirt in them and you um, plant stuff. And then she's had to put a fence around it because we have the groundhogs that will... <laughs> get into it or all the other animal that you caught so they normally have to fence it off so um, animals don't get in and eat whatever they're growing his mom actually grows tomatoes yep. and cucumbers and carrots um, and she also has a planter box that she plants those in as well and i think it was cecilia um, who in the facebook group actually put a picture of what if everybody did this in their front yard instead of having grass. And it was like Jamie was saying, all of these planters and in the United States, a lot of people spend a lot of money on their lawn and it would be too much money in my opinion mm -hmm. on their lawn, just trying to make it look green and wasting a lot of water to do that. And I had thought about it. If we just put a couple planters, maybe in our backyard or something, that would be Really good. Um, so if you see oranges and pineapples growing in the United States, it's just, they can't grow where we live. We have to grow things like I mentioned, like hardier, hardier things because of our short growing season and our difficult weather. Hi, Adriana from Poland. I haven't seen her before. No, welcome. Um, we wants to know what's the difference between shut down the school and close the school pretty much nothing right yeah. um you know close seems a little less harsh so maybe they close up maybe to use a phrasal verb they might close up the school at night but when you say shut down it's for a longer period of time but the black fly i should mention black flies so they're they're basically the same basically the same um amir is that how you say that Yes, Amir, what's going on, man? Um, he wants to know what fruit trees we have in our area locally. What did we... Okay, so... Apple, apples. Blueberries. Yeah, blueberries, a little bush. They grow on a bush. Um, pears. You can find pears. We have a lot of berries. Yeah. So in the summer, it's almost like every couple weeks... These berries will be in season. Strawberries. Yeah. I can't remember how the order goes, but it might be raspberries, strawberries, blueberries are definitely the latest in the year. Cranberries. Cranberries. They also can grow pumpkins. Oh, so Andre? Andrea? Oh, yeah. Andre? No, uh, Andre. Andre. He says Russia has lifted the lockdown this week, but they still have about 10,000 cases every day. I saw my my buddy there. Uh, I've mentioned him on the channel. He's not, I don't know him, but bald. Somebody mentioned that. So he is staying in Belarus right now. And he's also saying lockdown was lifted. Last I knew, uh, our buddy there, um, Vladimir, Vladimir, uh, was in the hospital with COVID. Is that not true? That's what I heard. Andres? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a new person. I haven't. No, I've seen. Oh. Hey, what's up, Andres? Hi. Um, Eamon? I'm on, I'm probably. On. He Sorry. wants to know about euphemisms and soft language, like shell shock, change to post-traumatic stress disorder, and so on. And it's not only in the U.S. We all we all do it. Yeah, I would think right euphemisms. Um, I did make a video long, long time ago. Well, long for this channel since it's been around almost four months. Almost four months. But for euphemisms, and I'm sure it's like you said, it's universal. Most people, if in their culture they have trouble talking about this, we do it for death. We do it for death, like, oh, uh, he's in a better place, he's moved on, passed away, not kick the bucket. We had talked about that uh, a couple days ago, so not kick the bucket. It is a euphemism, but you wouldn't want to say that to a family member. Um, what else? Losing a job, sex. Uh, so a lot of euphemisms for those uncomfortable things. Maybe I'll make another one. What was that? Oh, shell-shocked. Yeah, and sometimes 
Well, I don't want to get too much into it. Maybe that's better for a video. But yeah, often once something becomes, once something starts having a bad connotation, then we move on and find something else. For example, dumb. At one time, dumb meant simply the person was unable to talk. But since dumb had such a bad connotation over the years, it was changed to mute. So sometimes that happens, like shell-shocked has become, did you mention it? We would call it, uh, stress disorder. yes, we would call it post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, PTSD. We, we do have mosquitoes, but that's not what's out right now. They'll be coming out probably in June. Um, so we do have mosquitoes and they're very pesky. Yes, they like to feast on your blood. Yes. Oh, man. Cyrillic language. I think, is that Tatiana? Could be. Hi, Naima. She wants to know, do people own German Shepherds as pets? They do, and German Shepherds are also used a lot with our police um, to find people, to find lost children. Um, and you, We do have Mastiffs and Pit Bulls. Um, Mastiffs aren't as mean as pit bulls. I can't stand pit bulls. I think we should not be able to own them. And a lot of people would disagree with me on that, but we've had way too many issues with pit bulls in our own state. Um, did just, you want to talk about your mastiff story? Do you have a mastiff story? I do have a bull mastiff. Did you, did you want to <laughs> yeah, talk about sure. it? Yeah, sure. So when I was 18, right before I went to college, I worked for a construction company um, in the office and that family bred bull mastiffs. Now, they're really, really big dogs. If you look them up, they have huge faces, um, huge bodies. Um, but they were having trouble mating a couple of their um, dogs. So as part of my job, I got recruited um, to help these two dogs actually mate and then also get um, sperm from the male dog so that they can artificially inseminate the female dog. I mean, I couldn't say no because I, I wanted the job, but it was it was definitely one of the weirdest things I've done for my job. But they made a lot of money breeding those dogs. All right. There was a comment. I did allow it. I have a few, like, trigger words that if a word is said, it just I, – I have to approve it or it gets deleted. But uh, that we do sometimes say the blank hits the fan or will hit the fan. And you can see a Zot's comment. And that is actually quite common. The blank will hit yeah. the fan. Yeah. It means things are going to go badly. Maybe somebody is about to get into trouble and we'll say, oh, blank's going to hit the fan. We just know that somebody is going to be upset or it's just you know that there is something bad happening, usually in a, in a funny way, kind of. Um, Sergey suspects that Spanglish is more popular than Spanish. Yeah, that could be, could be, um, although, yeah, in, uh, maybe, maybe, but I mean, there are some people, if you go to Miami, there are pockets, not just Miami, but there are pockets of communities where you can live day in, day out, only Spanish, so... Uh, and and I think Jamie, with your job, that yeah, I see a lot of my students. They go back and forth, or they kind of speak to me in Spanish and English. Especially, um, I have actually a lot of students this year that came to me only speaking Spanish, and um, we do use Google Translate. But once they start learning English words, they speak both Spanish and English. And I know some Spanish words like bathroom, hello, um, good afternoon, um, books, and things like that. So we kind of flip Spanish and English talking to each other. So, um, yeah. But in your job where you talk to COVID patients, there are some. Oh, yes. Yes. My, with my COVID job, we actually do have a Spanish speaking um, nurses and doctors and um, people like that do my job that can um, just speak Spanish for those people. We call them Spanish translators. Um, so, and then we also have both at my school and at my job with COVID, we have what's called a language line. So you can call into the language line and request someone that speaks like say Somalian, um, and they'll get a translator on that. It does cost money, but there was somebody come on that will translate, um, the call for the parent, 
um, or the COVID case for the patient. Um, and that's called a language line. And there's several different languages on the language line that we do. Hi. Oh, Zabeda. Zabeda. What's going on, Zabeda? How are you? Mary asked, describe myself in five words. Oh, you would probably be better at that. Oh, descri- describe you? Yeah. Describe you? Um, uh, passionate. I would definitely say passionate. You're passionate yeah. about um, caring. Yeah. Um, hardworking. Yeah, I do. I, I, I get stuff done. Yeah. I can make things happen. <laughs> um, if you tell me no, I usually can find a way um, to make it work. Um, sometimes I can be lazy. Like I like to sleep in. I can't get motivated sometimes, but, um, I don't know. I do speak my mind quite a bit and that sometimes gets me in trouble a lot. Um, when I should just, when somebody makes a comment that I don't agree with, I, that can get me in trouble sometimes. Um, I think I'm a good mom. I'm a good wife most of the time. Asma, she wants to learn another language besides English. Is it better to start with alphabet or listen to native when they speak and use notes? I'm a total beginner from zero information about mm-hmm. it. Well, like I usually say to uh, people who ask questions about learning languages, I would always defer. I would always turn the question to someone in here because you all are better language learners than I am. You know, I'm just one year into learning another language. But if you are listening to me right now and understanding what we are saying, you are far better language learner than I am. I need advice from you. So if anybody would like to answer Ozma's question, that would be great. And I would like to hear what you have to say. Now for, I know when I'm learning Russian, I would like to learn the alphabet a little bit because I do think that Russian is more, we call it phonetic, more phonetic than English. English, we, we actually have spelling bees because our language are, it's so hard to spell the words in our language because there are no rules. But I know with Italian and I'm starting to realize with Russian that it is helpful to learn the alphabet. Don't, you know, don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but so I guess it depends on the language is what I would say. Is what I would say. William, I did kill a black fly, but I don't, it's, I don't know where it's the gone. other one is, but it's gone. Scared him. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll just talk about black flies for a second. Yeah, sure. And we have black flies in Maine and they will not bite you. They won't bite you, but they're little and they're black. Thus the name black fly. But then they get into your eyes. They're just a nuisance and you might irritating swallow them you might it actually will fly into your eye and die so they're not the brightest of insects but we like to hike and so yesterday i noticed them a little bit while i was walking um so when they come out we normally stop walking in the woods until that calms down a little bit it's usually for our months of like may to june to early july and Mm -hmm. once once the heat of the summer comes they disappear. Yep. Azat wants wants to know what it means wear her birthday suit. Now, that's from uh that's well, that's from Bob the Canadian's chat this morning. Uh, yeah, I I love that. Um and as uh, if you were in Bob the Canadian's chat, I'll just repeat what he said unless you want to answer it. It just means you're naked. Your birthday suit. When you were born, you were born naked, so that was your birthday suit when you were born. No clothes on. Yep. On the day of your birth. That's where birthday comes from. On the day of your birth, it's how you came into this world. Um, and I mean, I'll just another word. I won't go too much into it because we do have a teen in here. But mm. so, there's songs like Rihanna has a song about cake, um, and cake just refers to your butt. So good to know. Yep, good to know. Good to know. Um, well, and, oh, in the South, we didn't do this one, but you guys have a different. You have a different way of uh, saying naked. 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 Yeah. Naked. Yep. That's how they say it in the South. Naked here, naked in the South. I think it's spelled with a I and a K or yep. something like that. Naked. 
Naked. So VIP Rob, he he just says the word joint attached to these diner places kind of gets to him. Um, oh. And I could see that because a joint could also mean something that you smoke. Um, and the word a joint can also be in your body, um, the joints of your body. So that's a really, I'm not sure why we use it for a burger joint. That's a good question. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <clears throat> But when when a native speaker says burger joint, I can pretty much guarantee they're not thinking of the other kind. Uh oh, well it's, we it's can, back. Yep. Maybe we lost you guys for a second. If so, sorry. And I might be talking to absolutely nobody right now. But um, George Carlin is, I think, brilliant. Hopefully, we're back. I think George Carlin is brilliant, and I can imagine for a somebody learning English. He would be very, very difficult to understand because even for native, he speaks really quickly. But yeah, I love most of uh, George Carlin's comedy routines. I mean, he's just a brilliant, brilliant comedian. Mary also likes George Carlin. She says she's obsessed with him. <laughs> VIP Rob, I'm sorry, he says the numbers in Brazil for COVID is skyrocketing and he does not know when their lockdown is going to be lifted. I, I saw that yesterday. It was, I think, 800 deaths in Brazil. And I thought uh, Brazil had a handle on it. And I'm pretty sure when you hear the 800 reported deaths, like just add a couple hundred. I bet I bet there were some others that weren't reported. Ibrahim wants to know if it's true that the Minnesota, the state of Minnesota does it have 10,000 lakes? Hmm. I don't know. I don't either. I think it's close to that, though. I think it's close to that. And the one thing about Minnesota is if you went to that state and definitely went to Minneapolis, um, Somali would be a very popular language. So Minneapolis, St. Paul, there are two cities there. Uh, but I do think they have about 10,000 lakes. One of our favorite movies of all time, Grumpy Old Men. Oh, I love that movie. Takes place in Minnesota. And much of that movie does take place on a lake. But I've never actually been to Minnesota. But I bet they do have close to 10,000 lakes. Nicholas wants to know if I can say something in Spanish. <laughs> There's the test. Buenos tardes. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? Me llamo Jaime. There you go. That's what I'll, I, I think I said good afternoon. And I said, uh, what is your name? My name is Jamie. I mean, that, that sounded native to me. That sounded native right <laughs> see i took spanish in high school and my teacher was so old like he was just writing out his last couple years to retire he's actually passed away now a really really nice man but a lot of us i wasn't a great student in high school i was just really there for the social part um I mean, I can read well, I can write well, but I could have done a lot better if I had put forth more effort. Um, and can I, should I tell the story? Is it Austin or? Balls? Yeah. yeah. So his name was Mr. Austin and he had a crazy eye that looked one way. And we, we talked about wonky yesterday. Wonky yeah, eye too? a wonky eye. Yeah. And um, he sat with his legs open and you could just really see his private area really well. It was very defined. Well, two parts of his private area. Two right? parts, yeah. And so we would call him Austin Balls. Like, and a lot of the guys would just in the lunchroom, they'd be like, oh, here's Austin Balls. And um, I have a really good friend. I won't name her on here in case she ever watches it, but she was really great at finding our test on the desk. So at lunch, we would memorize all the answers. We were horrible, horrible students. I don't recommend it. I'm not proud of it. Um, but we could get him off on these tangents or off on these stories about him growing up. So we didn't really learn Spanish well. And I should have because I took two years. So I should know more than my colors and numbers and things like that. Um, but we have talked about in, on this channel that um, and American schools don't do a great job in teaching people how to learn English, excuse me, well, maybe not English either, but how to learn a foreign language. And I think from my one year of Italian, I've learned way more than I could have one year in high school learning Italian. So we actually have in Portland, Maine, um, I have a friend whose son started kindergarten in American school, but his teacher 
um, only spoke in Spanish hmm. in the classroom. Um, they could not speak any English. So it's called a Spanish <clears throat> immersion classroom. And they've had that teacher. He's now, he's, I think, two years younger than my son. So he's going into sixth grade next year. So they only speak Spanish in the classroom until, unless they go to like what Brent teaches, uh, language arts. But science is in Spanish. Everything is in Spanish except for uh, language arts. And their other foreign languages, they take another. And they actually just won the best immersion school in the United States. And I would have loved to get my kids into something like that. Um, if you're really going to learn a foreign language, it's so much better to start when you're younger. Um, so um, that's kind of what... Uh, there's other schools in the United States, not <coughs> many, that also do an immersion classroom. Um so Beta wants to know, is there an American version of the TV show Come Dine With Me? And what do you call this kind of show? Jeez. I have never seen Come Dine With Me. I don't know. It sounds like it might be a cooking show. Or maybe mm -hmm. they visit restaurants. I'm not sure. Or we, do you sit down and tell each other, meet each other and get to know each other? We do have um, at least two channels in the United States that are totally dedicated to food shows. And it's something that we used to watch when our kids were younger because the whole family could sit together and, and watch the show. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, VIP wants to know, what's the couple's song? Are you talking about us as a couple? What's our song? Or the... Well... So couples song is definitely a term that's often used. And if we, you know, like maybe when you're first starting to date, if it's you say, oh, that's our song, that's our song. Um, we have a couple that we often go to Dave Matthews Band shows with. Dave Matthews Band is one of our favorite music uh, artists. And they have their song. It's a Dave Matthews Band song. But... I don't know. What would you say? You've got a friend in me from Toy Story, yeah. maybe? <laughs> that might yeah. be ours. Um, Toy Story was a big movie when we first started dating, which is how old I love we it. are. But yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And, and there's a song in it. I'm sure most are familiar. You've got a friend in me. That, that could be our song. Yeah. I've, I, you should watch Toy Story if you want to learn English. Mm. I think that's... it's They use a lot of like slang or a lot of different phrases or euphemisms um i mean you're gonna cry i've cried i think at all of them mm. so it's very heartwarming i love them Definitely. um mary wants to know what is the meaning of the sentence penchant manipulation whoa i've never heard of that no, i never have either um that almost i don't know mary pichant is that word a pichant is, I, I think it comes from French, but I think it's a particular, I don't know. A, I think a pichant is a, a particular talent. And then manipulation is moving something f to way you want it. So like I could manipulate this computer so that there isn't a glare where you just like a fine movement, a small movement, but I'm not sure, Mary. I do agree, and Naima, you should watch cartoons with the subtitles on. I think that'll help you recognize words, hear them. Um, Sharif wants to know, Sharif, sorry, messed that up. Which states are more expensive to live in the USA? And uh, before we move on to that, I'll, I'll mention that I do watch Peppa Pig quite a bit in Italian. I really do. I have a whole playlist of Peppa Pig in Italian. My daughter's friends actually, um, I'll just tell a quick story, came over one day they're they're really good friends of ours and they were like why is your dad watching peppa pig because they saw it on his phone he was watching it and so we had to explain he's learning italian that way they just thought that was funny yeah i didn't think anybody could see my screen and they happened to walk by it's like i didn't know they i didn't know they saw it but um so expensive states in the united states california is definitely probably the highest and most expensive New connecticut connecticut connecticut's number one. Oh, okay uh, New York, I think, mm -hmm. is expensive. Um, I don't know if Florida is or not. I know real estate can get expensive on the coast. I think Maine is also expensive on the coast. Um, it is definitely more expensive to live here. Um, 
than it is in the south. The south is really, really cheap because you don't have to, you don't have snow. Um, the weather's really good. You have brick homes. I mean, the south, you do have tornadoes, and we, we do have to do a video yeah, we do. Um, on the house <clears throat> that um, we lost in the tornado. Um, so those are the most yeah. highest states, I would think. I would say. And then in any state, though, you're going to be paying more in the city. Yeah. Most likely in the good parts of the city, the closer you are. So, yeah, Connecticut, California, New York. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Massachusetts. Massachusetts, Massachusetts is, is probably expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Abraham wants to know if we can say the name of the movie again. I don't think it Which was Tour Story because we we're kind of behind. Did you talk about a movie earlier? Uh, maybe. Mm. I know we mentioned George Carlin. Oh, Fast and Furious? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. That was a while ago, yeah. Fast and uh, the Furious. Uh, what movie did you watch with Ace? You talked about that one, too. Hobbs and Shaw, I think it was yeah. called. Uh, Donata, Nicholas. Donata. Zabeda <clears throat> wants to, do, to, to know, what do you call those guys who stare at women like perverts? Uh, we call them perverts. Creepy. Dogs. Mm-hmm. Um... Cringy, mm -hmm. uh, scary. Um, it, it peeping Tom. Yeah, you might hear that. That's uh, actually illegal. But if somebody was trying to look into someone's bedroom window, that would be called a peeping Tom, and is illegal in the United States. What was that? I don't know. Azat uh, wants to know. Um, he hears that Baltimore. Um, Baltimore is in Maryland is the most criminal city in the U S is that so? Um, uh, I don't know. It depends on what you talk about for criminal. If you're, I mean, they, they have had some tough times there, but the murder capital, if you're talking most murders, believe it's still St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, Detroit, Detroit is, is pretty. Chicago mm. is getting, um, Compton. Um, yeah. Um, Rob wants to know what our zodiac signs are. I'm a Pisces. And I'm a Scorpio. I was born on November 5th. Do those two so. go together? I'm not sure. We're very, very different, so it would surprise me if they didn't go together. So, Ural Lopez. Um, oh. Azot... Uh, lives in, um, so, um, bald and bankrupt went to what he said was the most criminal city in Russia. I don't think it was that one. I wonder what is the most criminal city. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I, I Austin balls always just told me that my Spanish name was Jaime. Um, I like the other one. Is it Jamina? That sounds better. South America. Nicholas says they only have English schools. Oh, very cool. Oh, and, via, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was thinking, Nicholas, you are from Chile, right? I didn't. I didn't. You might have mentioned that, and I didn't see it. Um, VIP said yes. Our song. Mm. Yeah. So the, you got a friend to me. Number forty by Dave Matthews. Um, it's a deep cut. Yeah. You say that when it's a deep cut, it's probably nobody knows that song. But I haven't seen it live yet. I always, when we go to a concert, I always hope that I'm going to get it. Um, we had a couple of songs that are in our wedding. Lover Lay Down by Dave Matthews. Um, number 34 by Dave Matthews. That doesn't have any words to it. It's just really pretty. Um, when I'm 64 by the Beatles. Oh, yeah. After we got married, we walked out of the church to that one. Um, I made it. Have you talked about mixed tapes before? No. Yeah. So um, when we first met, we only had cassettes. CDs weren't out just yet so we would make mixed tapes for each other with songs and send them to each other and the first design that i drew on his paper for the mixtape it's kind of special to us we did our wedding cd with that same design that i drew um what songs are on that mixtape fast car if you um luke combs just did a remix of fast car i listened to it last night tracy chapman did the original um, I love that song, Fast Car, and Luke Combs does a good job. There's also another singer. 
um, that has done a song with Billie Eilish that also redid the cover. And I can't think of his name, but he also, if you just look up Fast Car Covers on YouTube, it's really, really good. Slow, it's a beautiful song. Um... Oh, Nicholas, I'm sure that he's saying that the um, uh, it, the school that your friend went to, their son, is that a private school yep, too? Yeah, that's in Portland. It's okay. actually right next to the school you used to teach at, Lyseth. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's not private? No, it's public. Oh, public. Okay. So um, there, for some of those emerging schools, like Nicholas is saying, it's expensive, I think in Chile. And some can be expensive here too. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, the parents have to volunteer. For yes. That, right. Yes. Um, and I think they, they had too many volunteers, so they mm. had to have a draft or a drawing for the kids to get in. Um, toy story is amazing. You should watch all four. I bawled like a baby in the fourth one and the second one. I think I've bawled in all of them. Cry. Yeah. The third one's the worst. Azat Oof. wants to know, do you like the movie Jackie Brown? I love it. I love it. It's a great movie. Yeah, that's uh, mentioned. Um, that's been mentioned in this chat before too. And I, I mentioned how much you like Jackie Brown. Mm -hmm. It's a great movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody was on a Quentin Tarantino kick. I think they were watching Kill Bill. Hmm. I can deal with some of his movies, but some of them are way too violent for me. Um, which one? The one Jamie Foxx was in. I couldn't watch Django. it. Yeah. Django Unchained is a hard watch. Yeah. A Ronnie. Aroni. I'm not sure I'm still saying it correctly, but he. No, high school language classes are not effective no. in the USA. I would totally agree. Oh, Zabeda said that that show, Come Dine With Me, is a hospitality and cooking competition. Oh, yeah. We have uh, we have tons of those. Yeah. Oh. Um, we have one called Chopped, which is mm -hmm. pretty fun. They get a lot of just sometimes they get cooks, like professional chefs. Sometimes they get just people off the street, mm -hmm. I think, or celebrities. And there are maybe three rounds. Yeah, I think three rounds, yep. right? It's an appetizer and then a main dish and then a dessert. And then what the people who put on the show do is they give them random ingredients and they have to make dishes out of it. So we like that. That's one competition. And then the... Um, kids Baking kids Championship, we love. They have kids that are really good bakers. That come on um if you have food network um or you probably look it up on youtube kids baking championship they're given like two hours and in, in ingredients to make these amazing desserts and they're so good and so cute some of the kids are a little cringy but oh ibrahim um it's grumpy old men oh yeah that's i wonder if i can type on here there's two grumpy old men and grumpier old men and both are very good very very good now it's about I can't even see if I wrote that correctly. Uh, it's about, what, 25 years old? Oh, gosh. It's got to be older than that. Hmm. I, I started watching it like 25 years yeah, ago. Yeah, true. Maybe early 90s, late 80s. Peppa Pig, Sergey. Aroni. He's talking about Virginia and the rain and the space between. Nicely mm. done, man. Nicely done. Some good, good songs right there. Virginia and the rain. Um, Mary wants to know, do you have any moments about the lucky Luke? Oh, Mary. I'm sorry. No, I don't know that I don't, either. I don't know what lucky Luke is. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Eric, auto reverse function. Yes. For the cassette tapes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, cassettes. Wasn't that awful? You had to wait for it to rewind and just find the right spot. Or I used to... I'm sure you did too. When a song came on a radio, I would press record instead of going out and buying the cassette tape for their record. That's how I'd get the songs off the radio. So you kids these days, you don't know how lucky you have it. Back in our day, we had to get a pencil out when our tape got caught up in the machine. Um, VIP, James Taylor first recorded You've Got a Friend in Me. I'm not no. sure. Uh, he does have a song though. Is it Randy Newman? Oh, oh, that's a different song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've actually seen James Taylor in concert when I was oh. in college. It was really good. He does have a different song. Um, oh, what? I don't know, but it, yeah, you're right. It's um. You've got a friend. He does. Yeah, it's it called is. that. You've got a friend, and the one in Toy Story is called You've Got a Friend in Me. But wow, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Voice Avenue. I have seen that Fast Car cover. 
It's really, really good. I wish I could think of that other guy who does the YouTube um, one. It's really good. It looks so peaceful. Branyan Lobo? Yeah. It is peaceful here. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Unless the black flies come out. Right. I don't know. I think I've, I've been out here before, but I'll just show you a little. It's our backyard. Squirrels. People are people are working on their pools. and uh, Yeah, it's really nice. Why does Dick Shant? Deke, well, Deek Shant, I think. Yeah. Now, that's how uh, Bob the Canadian pronounces it. Hopefully, we're both not yeah. you know, pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. But. The first three Toy Stories are good. The fourth one is really good. Um, I think my favorite, who was, it's Key and Peele in the fourth one, but they played, did they play Bunny and something else? Yeah. They were, I want to see a movie with just the two of them. No. So funny. Chicago had the most serial killers. Is that thunder? I think we just had some thunder. Yeah. Oh, nice. Serial yep. killers in Chicago. I'm actually Great. watching a Netflix. Um, he was on CNN. What's the guy on CNN? Anderson Cooper? No. He's British. Oh, Piers Morgan? Piers Morgan. I'm actually watching his... I love crime shows like Dateline, The First 48. Um, and I'm watching Piers Morgan. He actually is um, interviewing serial killers in the United States. It's really, really good. All of them, except for one, has said they haven't done it, even though there's overwhelming evidence. But it's... They're uh, psychopaths, so it's really good. I love to watch it. Nobody else in my family does. So, um, Gleb wants to know: Have you watched Game of Thrones or read the original book? What is your impression? No, I'm sorry. I never got into Game of Thrones. Was it George R R R R R R Martin? I think he has a bunch of R's in his name. No, uh, never. I've never watched Game of Thrones, and Jamie yeah. hasn't either. No. No. <clears throat> Mary says Lucky Luke is the American old cartoon. And I have never seen Gosh, that. And we're really old. I'm really old, so no, I've never seen Lucky Luke. I didn't really get into cartoons when I was little. Um, I don't know why. I kind of did, but yeah. I don't know Lucky Luke. Aroni. Aroni. I, I, I know I'm butchering that. I'm, I'm still so practicing, sorry. yeah. Junior Master Chef. Kids in that show are robots, though. <laughs> I mean, how can seven-year-olds cook a full meal? Uh, I don't know. I have my doubts, right? Are they getting some help somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. Sergey says it looks like you live near a forest. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, occasionally we'll have deer back there. We have turkeys. So yeah, we do live near nearish. We've we've talked about that before, right? That ish. We live nearish a forest, but it's it's smallish. Mm, it's yeah. smallish. My son's best friend lives. He can just walk right through the woods to get to her house, and it doesn't take him that long. Um, Kevin Hart, VIP Rob says, Kevin Hart special on Netflix cracked me up. It's so funny. I actually watch, um, on YouTube, a lot of Kevin Hart and The Rock interviews together because them together just really make me laugh. So if you're looking for something funny to watch on YouTube, just type in The Rock and Kevin Hart's interviews. They do a really good job. Um, hilarious. Hilarious. Mary said, Lucky Luke came out in two, early 2000 when she was a kid. Well, Mary, in oh. 2000, I was 24. So. Right. We were way too mature yeah. for comics. There's a horn over there. That's a, ca a yeah. cartoon. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I yeah, we're a little bit too old for that. Us boomers here. Uh Eric says no Lucky Luke is a French comic though. Oh. Ah. Hmm. We had we had a French so so when Jamie and I were kids, we had a French comic and uh it's called The Smurfs. But hmm. It was very big over here, but I do believe that started in France. Azat wants to know, what is our creepiest sound? I don't know. In the English language? Yeah. Creepiest sound? Well, I mean, we have sounds that people can't like really like, like nails on a chalkboard. Or like my kids hate it when I scrape my fork against a plate. Um, oh, maybe. Oh, not so. Not just in English, yeah. but like in like general. Hear, yeah, my kid, my everybody in my family hates to hear people chewing. Yeah, we have to have the TV on or some kind of noise. Yeah, that's rough. Um, Mikhail Silva. I don't think I've. Oh seen yeah. Him. Hi, I've never from seen from Brazil. Name. I think. Hi. It's okay that you're late. <laughs> yeah, it's all right that you're late. Eric says an asterisk. 
Um, so if we're talking about um, the English language, there is a little. It's that thing right there, an asterisk. Hard to say though, right? Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. I think is how we say it. But that is often used to fix a problem. So in sports, there's a famous asterisk uh, for uh, the most home runs in a season, right? There's a record, most home runs in a baseball season. But some people want an asterisk near that because it's most likely the guy who broke it was on steroids. And sometimes in English, when we make a mistake, we'll put that little sign meaning, oops, I meant this. So I think that, I hope that's what you meant. Uh, Brian Lobo? Yeah. She says people make weird sounds all the time. I think he was asking the creepiest sound because we thought we heard thunder. Mmm. Um, that's uh, not a creepy sound. I love the sound of thunder and lightning and rain. Um, yeah, so creepy. How would you describe creepy? It just gives you, um, sometimes we call it the heebie-jeebies. Makes it's your like, skin crawl. Yeah. Chill goosebumps. Yeah. So creepy sound. I don't know. But yeah, thunder is a, like a dangerous sound. It would be like, whoa, is there thunder? We would have to go in because we got, we got a lot of metal around us. But that was weird. I, and If it was thunder, that would have been the first thunder I've heard in mm. a while, yeah. I believe. It's supposed to rain today, so. Mm. Um, Nicholas uh, says Astros, uh, he gives them two asterisks for cheaters. My man, Yes. And who knows, the Boston Red Sox might get that mm. after because their manager, Alex Cora, used to play mm. for the Red Sox, came up to the to the Red Sox, and yeah, maybe they were cheating too. Aroni says he can't wait to see Space Force on Netflix with Steve Carell. Yeah, um, my daughter was just telling me about that yesterday or the day before, and I forgot who else is in that, but... Um, Jane, um, she's in uh, Wreck It Ralph, uh, um, and she's on Glee. Is her name Jane? Her name is Jane. I can't think of her last name. I knew it for the. Um, yeah, I knew you said it the, well yesterday. Yeah. Hmm. And sometimes when you're live, it's like a little bit. You know, your brain's not working. Ansley. As much. Jane. Is her name Jane? Her name is Jane. I'm thinking Jane. She's got blonde, Curtin. short, yeah. blonde hair. It was an older Saturday Night Live person. I, I've, we get, we've actually have called up to all the questions. We got to the end of the questions? Yeah. Hmm. Nice. All right. So maybe we will uh, we'll put a pin in it. Put a pin in it. That means we'll come back to it later. We'll put a pin in it. So unless there are any last-minute questions, maybe we will uh, skedaddle. Another way to say get out of here. We'll skedaddle. Don't are you ask sure me. you don't have another question? Because now we have to do chores. No, just kidding. Fine. It's fine. We'll get yeah. the chores over with. Uh, now you have Alex Cora in your Boston. Yes, Nicholas. Uh, but recently, he's all done. Yeah. yeah, they fired him. Yeah. Yeah, they recently fired him because of all the controversy that was found out the Oreo at uh, the um, Astros. So I don't think he'll have another job in baseball. That's a, a pretty serious cheating, stealing. Mm. He was. Accused of stealing signs, but. Um, yeah, because Pete Rose, he's been trying. They, he wants to get into the Hall of Fame, but I don't think he's going to be able to get into the Hall of Fame. Oh, Jane Lynch. Yes. Good Jane job, Baroni. Yep, that's her. Thank you, yep. Jane Lynch. What is William saying about, um, can't pronounce. Oh, you can't pronounce that, Roni. And I can't either. Right, I can't either. While Aroni has taught me many times how to pronounce his name. It's this the double R's in that last sound that always trip me up. Eduardo wants to know what chores do you hate the most? Bathrooms and laundry. Yeah, I personally uh I don't like cleaning the toilet. You know, nothing quite so humbling as cleaning one's own toilet. But uh I like it when it is clean though. So I I usually do that. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna do that after this, I'm going to attack the bathroom, clean up the bathroom. I'm doing the kitchen first. I started a little bit before. Um, but luckily, it's not that hard. I mean, we're no. home all the time, but 
it hasn't been that hard to keep the house clean. Our kids are doing their chores right now too. They, um, so because my daughter is 14, our daughter is 14, they get 14 chores each week they do, and we pay them $14 a week to do those chores. And then they have to do certain things with their money and split them into certain um, envelopes. Um, so they're already doing some chores. So it really helps all four of us pitching in to do it. Um, so. so they have to put some money and save. They have to donate some to a charity. charity. Yeah. Uh, they have a spend. They have a college. They're saving up each for a car. And... That's it. Spend, save, give, college, and car. So they split the 14 bucks into that or whatever money that they make um, somewhere else. Thank you, Ibrahim. I'm not sure when I'll be back again. It'll just be up to Brent. Um, do you use the idiom hot under the collar in live? She said Bob Canadian did a lesson about clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah, if something is hot under the collar, we sometimes, you might hear that. It's not too popular, but it just means that you're nervous about something or maybe you're receiving a lot of uh, criticism. Maybe people are upset with you. could say a little hot under the collar. It also means if you're frustrated too because sometimes when people get mad, um, they their necks or their faces get really red. I had a superintendent that I worked for and that's how we could tell when somebody said something that made her mad or frustrated – her face and neck just got really red. So it just means you're hot under the... So she was hot under the collar. Um, Eduardo wants to know, how do we share the chores? We we, we just kind of do what needs to get done. And like today, like he said, I'll do the bathroom. And I said, well, I'll do the kitchen. And I'll do the living room and vacuum. And um, I got a new vacuum cleaner that works on hardwood floors and um, carpets. I'm really excited about that because we've used it and gets everything really, really clean. And um, he does his own laundry. He doesn't like people to do his laundry. And then I, me and the kids, we all take a, care of our laundry together. I usually wash and dry, and then we all put up our clothes together. They know. Um, they're, our kids are really, really independent. I, they need to be because I don't want them to come back and live with us when they're older. So I, I usually cook dinner. I cook breakfast this morning, but a lot of times they're on their own for breakfast and lunch. And my son doesn't like a lot of stuff that we cook, so if he doesn't like what I cook, he makes his own dinner. Um, so they're pretty independent with getting their chores done as well. As well. Um, are you going to put subtitles on for this? Um, the subtitles always come maybe like an hour after. Yeah. It depends on how long this video is, but YouTube will put those on... Uh, automatically and most of the time they are correct in the video we just did um, the second part of the southern th slang I did go in and change a couple things because I said the liver and they thought it was deliver so there are always going to be subtitles on these um, on these on these shows on these uh, live streams it just takes a long time for them to process Eduardo wants to know what kind of chores do our kids do. So like today they're cleaning the room. My son is cleaning the bathroom that he uses. They have to sweep. They have to take care of their clean laundry. My son is sweeping up our garages and organizing them. Pick up the living room. Um, bring up their dirty clothes. Um, I pay them for the chores they do on Friday or Saturday. During the week they have to like unload the dishwasher and do chores just because they live with us. If you live with us, everybody takes care of the house, so they don't get paid during the week for those chores, but there are certain chores on Saturday or Fridays that they do that we do pay them for, and that's just to help teach them to learn that if you work hard, you get rewarded with money. If you don't work hard, I don't pay you. And it's also just really helping them with managing, learning how to manage money before they get out of our house and don't get into a lot of debt. And if you're if you're new here, uh, don't forget to subscribe. But our children are basically 13 and 14, so they can do pretty much anything yeah. we can do. So that's why they have yeah different chores than they had you know when a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. yep. Um, William wants to know what's your favorite dinner. Wow, mm. man. I'll let you think, but I I, okay. I I love Mexican food. So my favorite dinner is chicken soft tacos, chicken and cheese only. And there's this white cheese dip um, that they serve with the chips, and I love salsa. 
That would be my go-to meal. Or if we had a Waffle House, Waffle House is an American. Gosh, I have so many. Because City Cafe we talked about. I would eat at City Cafe every day, Waffle House every day. Um, so mine would probably be Mexican Waffle House or City Cafe. We talked about meat and three. Sometimes I don't even get a meat. Sometimes I just get four vegetables and eat the biscuits. Yeah, William, what's your what's your favorite dinner? Mm. I'd like to hear. Yeah, anybody else that wants to put that down there. Favorite dinner. I'm struggling. Uh, I don't know. Thai food? Man, a good pad thai is... Mm. Oof. I did, um, for our birthdays, we get to choose the dinner. So I think the last birthday I had, I did, I chose some pad thai. Mm-hmm. Love love thai food, yeah. And I, and I know that Americans, when we say Mexican and when we say Chinese mm. and when we say Thai... May not exactly be authentic, although our Mexican restaurant mm. that we have here, um, the parents who who uh, cook there were actually born in Mexico. So I think theirs is pretty authentic. It is. And yeah, it's pretty authentic. And the one that amazing. I like in Portland is pretty authentic, too. Mm. I always say if you know it's a good Mexican restaurant, if the people there are Spanish or from Mexico. If it's all Americans working there... Um, it's not going to be good. It's going to be American, Mexican, and that's never good. Yes. And unfortunately, with our Chinese restaurants, most of the people who own the Chinese restaurants are Chinese, mm-hmm. but they do also know that Americans expect Chinese food the American way, so it's not very authentic. Mm, now I'm getting hungry. We're actually yeah. going to support a local business today for probably dinner Yeah. Um, just to help the economy and help um, boost their business a little bit because I know that they're suffering since we can't go to eat at the restaurant. So we haven't decided, but we are going to support a local business tonight for dinner. Yes, Sheriff, the birds are behind us. That's a good sign that spring is coming, yep. except for the birds that are tearing up our front lawn. <laughs> I don't like those birds. Um, Zobeda wants to know, are we futuristic or is it the culture to raise independent kids? I really like this attitude. Our culture is so different. Mm. Well, I think in our culture, like kids normally don't come back home to live with you once they go to school or once they're 18 or once they get married. I know in a lot of cultures, families live together, which I really like too. If I had a a mansion, I would want all of us to live together because it would be nice to sometimes see them, but also have our private space. Um, but I think most people in America are independent. Some families are not. They kind of, if you're born into welfare it kind of carries on through your family unless you work your way out of it I actually took a really great class on poverty Um, America makes it really hard for you to get off welfare Um, very difficult and I can't that's that's a lot to go into Um, but you say welfare welfare is like the state or government gives you money to buy food Um, they give you money to pay for your housing um, because you don't have a job where you make enough Um, Or if you're on Social Security for a disability. um. But yeah, I will will talk about um, the goal for parents in the United States. Mm -hmm. Most, of course, most. Um, As opposed to other places um, that I know, like with Italy, and we've talked, and I I think where Zabeda is from in Algeria. The goal for parents is to give their kids the skills so they can leave. So they can leave and like you said, and not come back. So a lot, and I've talked with uh, some people uh, living in Maine. The idea is that probably our children won't live in Maine. They'll live in a larger city where there are more opportunities. So I can see where it would be very different in certain cultures where the children stay really close to their parents. It's not like that in most parts of the United States. Like we've started making our children call and make their own hair appointments or haircuts, doctor's appointments, um, and things like that, just so they get used to doing that themselves. So they don't have to call me and say, can you make me an appointment to go to the doctor? No, you need to do that. Um, so is it Brian? I, I say Brian Lobo. Brian? I hope it's yeah. Brian. I can't see the picture because my eyes are so bad. Um, he likes a Colombian dish. Oh a, yeah, rapas. yeah. We ha- we have that, don't we? Yeah. A, 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 I think I can't pronounce it, but a 
Agrappas. Agrappas, maybe? Is that Reza? Riza. Riza. So our schedule is so off due to the quarantine because I didn't eat breakfast until like 1030. Oh, lunch. When, when is so, our lunch yeah, time? Yeah, lunch for me, like if I'm at school, is usually between 1130 and 1230. And that's when most people have lunch, between 11 and 1. Today for lunch, I'm probably just going to have some snacks because we're, whatever we eat for dinner will be kind of big. But usually you have like a sandwich, a turkey sandwich or soup, or he eats like... Um, energy bars or high protein bars um salad is a good lunch thing that they have here um but we would love for you to go with us to lunch that would be awesome <laughs> that would be amazing nicholas likes toast with avocado and olives mm. uh, Riza, lots of questions i like we like that yeah, yeah here in brazil rice beans meatballs fish and eggs are known as a typical brazilian dish so i have only been to one brazilian restaurant and it was it was like we went to that meat brazilian meat right? yeah it was so good i loved it i had lamb for the first time it was really good um they it was an all you can eat meat and they would just bring you all these different meats there was some rice and stuff there too I, mm -hmm. it was a long time ago so I, yeah i don't know if that is accurate i think it might be but like um what they call it brazilian barbecue mm -hmm. where basically it was very similar to what they might do in certain mediterranean com countries greece possibly where they would shave off the meat from this like a um, huge stick and they would serve it to us. But yeah, mm -hmm. it was amazing. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long in our, in our city. Uh, Roni, our kids do not know uh, what they want to do after middle school or high school. My son, our son <laughs> has always wanted to be a doctor. So I wouldn't be shocked if he did something in the medical field. And my daughter really just wants to be a Broadway star at this point. And I'm not sure what she will choose as her career either. So, no, they don't know. But we just want them to be independent so they can find their way without a lot of help from us. Um, Muhammad? Muhammad, how are you? Eduardo, yes, we are full-time teachers. Yeah. But since we are in quarantine and not actually teaching at our school, I have a lot of extra time to devote to this YouTube channel, trying to grow it. So... That's why we're able to come on here once a day. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Mikhail uh, says Americans eat a lot of fast food often. Mm. That is true. Um, we used to eat out a lot before the quarantine because I hate to cook and we would just be going to different places with our kids to their practices. Um, but we've gotten a lot better. We've only eaten out yeah. three times since March 16th. So. Yeah, that's the sad thing is that, I mean, we're saving a lot of money, mm -hmm. but our local restaurants and businesses are really suffering, as I'm sure most of your local businesses are suffering too, unfortunately. Javed? Javad? I don't know. Javed, you might be new. Welcome. Welcome. He said he, she or he says, wish we do a live stream with our children. Mm. Yeah, and I'm always hesitant about that. I'm hesitant... I'm um, unsure about even mentioning too much of what they do simply because they're their own people and, um, you know, putting them on camera, I would be a little, I, pr I probably wouldn't. I mean, if they were begging me to put them on, I might, but they're not begging me to, <laughs> they, they don't, they don't want to be on camera. I don't think. Um, yes, our children, it takes, it takes them a long time to do their chores. Well, they're, they're a lot like, you know, uh, they get into their music, yeah. I think, mostly. So we uh, we like listening to music in this family a lot. And, you know, it might take them a while, but... I don't care as long as they get done. Yeah, they get done. Mikhail says fast food is not healthy at all. It's not. No, trust me. But I'd be interested to know what your favorite fast food places are if you have them. Like, I love Taco Bell. It's an American Mexican. What's your favorite fast food? Uh... Oh, well, Chick-fil-A, oh, right? Oh, like Chick-fil-A, yeah. If, we don't have one a here. Little... Yeah. Getting one, though, and I can't wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's Chick -fil -A fast Chick-fil-A would come first. Sure, there are many countries that don't actually have fast food, mm. but um, at McDonald's. Yeah. You know, a lot of countries have McDonald's. The good thing about McDonald's is you know what you're getting. It's probably going to be crap, but at least it's crap you're used to. Yep. Salty. Naima says in Algeria that children also stay with their parents, but she thinks it's important that they learn to be independent. I agree. And again, if I had a really huge house, if I was like a billionaire, 
I would either want them to live like next to me in their own home, or if we had a big enough space, I wouldn't mind if they um, lived in there. Oh, thank you, Law. I appreciate that. Brazilians love to make barbecue. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. Well, we've been, I mean, that's high on our list to visit Brazil. Mm -hmm. We have a couple countries, but Brazil was number one at one time. Rio would be nice to mm -hmm. visit. Yeah. The beaches of Rio and, oh. Mohammed wants to know if you're going to continue teaching English after the quarantine. Oh, on here? Oh, oh yeah. That was, yeah, that was mentioned um, maybe a week ago or so. I definitely would like to, once life gets back to normal, do like maybe two days a week where we do these live classes. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe one on the weekend, um, maybe earlier, and then one a little later for people in uh, parts of Asia. Because I know this is a difficult time for them, time-wise. It's it's the middle of the night in Tokyo. So. William wants to know how you like your steak. Rare, medium, or well done? Uh, I like it well done. And I'm not a big, I'm not a vegetarian by any means. But I like the my meat to look not like meat. So chicken fingers, breaded, <laughs> probably fried. And I don't, I don't like the idea of cutting through. So I eat steak. I don't eat steak often. I However, eat, I love steak. Um, my son loves steak, and I usually get it medium. Um, and there's one after medium. I don't like medium it well. well. Medium we, well. We, I usually yeah. get medium or medium well. I can't. I don't like it with. If I can see the blood, I don't like it. I can't eat it. So if you're talking about the different ways you get your steak cooked, it starts with rare, and then medium rare then medium, then medium well, and then well done. And in our state, there are actually laws against meat being too rare. Mm -hmm. So, Amir, you're welcome. It was fun today. Eduardo wants to know how we see ourselves in five years or ten years. Yeah, I, I got this question a couple days ago too, and I think um, at our age – we just kind of want to be uh, alive. Yes. You know, that, would, that would be Above nice. Above the ground. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> Even though we're still young. but And I went into a whole thing on uh, each decade of your life, what it's about. And I think as we get near like the 10 years from now, I think a lot. I think we're hoping that we have a nice uh, – we are setting ourselves up for retirement nicely. The part of our life where we won't be working anymore. That that would be in ten years, that we can we'll kind of see it in the distance. Um, so we can retire in about eighteen years, um, per our government, like how um, we can retire. So we have eighteen years to go to really work. You can keep working after that, but we have to put in at least eighteen more years. In five years, I just hope that my kids have graduated from high school and are continuing their education or have joined the workforce. In ten years, um. I hope that I still have no grandchildren and that we are traveling more together. We'll be empty nesters, mm -hmm. hopefully. And um, with my language learning, because that came up, uh, I, I would definitely still I'd like to learn languages. In 10 years, who knows, I would love to be fluent in Italian, French, and, and Russian, and, and possibly moving on to Portuguese and Spanish. So This looks like a new one, a new person. Dinara? Oh, yeah, maybe. Welcome. Dinara. She how are you? Welcome. She wants to know what meat, what animals we eat, the mm, meat of animals. Mm. It's a good question because uh, how about let's talk about some that are popular around the world, but we don't eat a lot of, mm -hmm. and that would be goat. With the goat is very, very rare here, and I know in, in certain parts of the world it's it's one of the most. But some people do drink goat milk here mm -hmm. and goat cheese, but we don't mm -hmm. eat the actual animal. No, so chicken is very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Beef is very, very popular. Uh, pork is not, it's very, very popular. I know that some religions don't allow the consumption to eat eat pork, but. We don't eat a lot. Pork. Our family doesn't eat a lot of pork. Bacon. Oh, bacon. We do bacon. eat bacon. Yeah. Bacon is, is very good. Yeah. But I think those are the three main ones. And even Cow. like. Oh, did I not mention beef? Oh, I don't, oh maybe you did. Did you? Sorry, uh, maybe I, I didn't. didn't hear you. Maybe I didn't. Um, but what's the other? Oh, lamb is not very popular here. Lamb, mm -hmm. not much. Cecilia, um, there she is. Hey, what's up? 
How is it in Argentina these days? Somebody was looking for you earlier in here. I think it was William. Oh, yeah. Yeah, empty nesters, that just means your, your birds have flown, your children have gone. So hopefully we will be empty nesters in 10 years. Oh, yeah. It'd be kind of sad, but also we know we've done a good job if they're not living with us. And I think that's it. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun. Uh, Jamie's welcome anytime. It's just uh, we just uh, don't talk as much English learning maybe on these types of uh, shows. Right. But it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, seems like people are, are staying around. Yeah, They're I know. not quite I leaving. I hate, I hate uh, leaving. We do have to um, uh, do some things. But um, And my brain is not as tired as it usually is after an hour or so because – you know, you take a lot of the load. Well, you know, it was, it was, I, I think we answered all your questions because you're not having to look. That's right. That's really helpful. And copying, pasting. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, so it was a little bit different today, but hopefully it was enjoyable. So it was great to see so many people, maybe some new people, maybe some new subscribers. If that's the case, welcome. Um, I plan on getting another video out this weekend, and it's going to be the phrasal verbs. Oh, the black flies are coming. Mm -hmm. Phrasal verbs with job. No, work. Phrasal verbs with work. And then I would like to do a video on to, at, and on. So three prepositions there that give English language learners difficulty. And who knows after that. I will always take suggestions, though. If anybody has any suggestions, that would be great. Eduardo, I'm trying to count up how many times we moved. Um... um. Hmm. I'm just thinking right now. One, two, three, four. While you do five, that, six. Um, I've lived probably over 20 different places in my life. That's high. Most people don't live that many different places, but we've lived in six different places. This is the lo this is the longest we've lived somewhere, right? In this house, I think. I think, yeah. Yeah, we've had six different places, and each time. Mostly they've gotten better. There was one in college where we went from one really good place to a really crappy place, but it was super cheap, so we couldn't pass it up, and it was right near our work. Um, I did not move as much as he did when he was right. little. I I moved one, two, three, three times when I was younger. Um, so, and I've only lived in two different states. Yeah. You two, right? Two different. No, you've lived in three because you where you were born. Yeah, I've lived in three. And then I went to college in two different ones. So, You're yeah. welcome, Naima and Asma. A lot of, um, let me write this term down. A lot of couples will move into a starter home. I can't really out, but I, a starter home it's called. I might have spelled that really, really wrong. I think I did. A starter home. So it's usually a small home that they can have make the payments on, save up for a bigger house that they will have when they have children. So a lot of times, uh, and that's what we did. We had some apartments when we were younger. We moved into a starter home, had the kids, then moved into a bigger home. So that's usually the plan for most people, if they can, if they can. Uh, is, that, is that a new person? Uh, no, oh, but... Virschlaf. That's how I say it. I hope I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Sometimes I just say Mr. Brewer, Mr. Brewer. <laughs> and Dinara. Dinara. I don't believe so. She's new from Hello, or oh, he's new from Hello Talk. Hello, welcome, welcome. They, I should say. Yeah. So oftentimes, in English at least, I think most places, oh. if it, Sorry, what's that? Did I mess no. up? Uh, if it's uh, ends in a vowel, often we will assume. The speaker is female, but uh, just you spelled starter home wrong. I figured I did. Okay, I figured I did. Um, <laughs> Adam wants to know if is your wife older than you? No, I'm about 15 years younger than he is. Yeah, there's a term that we we say called uh, robbing the cradle, which is what I did. No, he's only six months older than me. We're the same age right now, and we have two three months, right? Three months? Four. November, December, January, no, no, February, five. December. January. You gotta count November. No. November to December. December, no, January, January. December. Oh, four. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not. Four that old. months older than me. When you're 44, you have to watch those months right there. 
And I would have gray hair like him, but I get it colored. I have gray hair? Mm-hmm. And we have two children. You're welcome, Nicholas. It was fun. And Naima, it was fun. And Amir. Good stuff. And that's it. We will do this uh, maybe during quarantine once a week. That'd be nice. Yeah. Once a week if, if, you sure. can, if you can fit it in your busy schedule. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you guys so much. I can barely see the screen to see. Eduardo, say we do have to go, but I know we would say here. Was there another question? No. He oh, says okay. if you don't go, we will keep asking questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, and I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. it. It's fun. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Nice to see you guys. Uh, I'm trying to get out of here. We can't. It just, we're got spotty Wi Fi maybe out here. See you guys. Adios, amigos. Nicely done, Bugs. Yeah, you too. That was good. That yeah. Was, I think it went like an hour and a half. Yeah. I don't even know if we're on here. Uh, we might still be recording here. End it. Bye-bye. End it.